We have breaking news. If this is true, and it's not a hoax or some very sick prank pulled on Judge Juan Mershon, Trump's conviction in New York on 34 felonies is very likely to be vacated, and vacated even before the president is sentenced on July 11th. This afternoon, Judge Juan Mershon alerted former President Donald Trump's attorney Todd Blanche and assistant New York County District Attorney Joshua Steinglass that this afternoon, the judge was made aware of a Facebook comment dated May 29th. Now, May 29th was one day before Trump was convicted of all 34 counts in his New York criminal indictment. The posted comment was made by a Facebook user allegedly named Michael Anderson. It reads, quote, my cousin is a juror and says Trump is getting convicted. Thank you, folks, for all your hard work, end quote. Now, the Facebook post also has two emojis, a party horn and a heart. The Facebook comment was apparently posted in response to a routine court system notice about oral arguments in the Fourth Department of the Appellate Division. The Facebook post comment, it's now been deleted, and the matter is obviously being investigated. Criminal Defense Attorney Jeff Brown joins me. Jeff, um, if true, mm -hmm. what happens? New trial. I mean, you can't, as a juror, you told repeatedly you're not to start deciding guilt or innocence until all the jury is together, till all the evidence has been heard and the case has been closed and you've been sent back to deliberate. If that was followed, there's no way this juror knew that Trump is getting convicted before then. And therefore, this juror is not only violating the rules regarding what the jurors, how they're supposed to conduct themselves, but obviously this juror is sharing that information with people outside of the jury. They're specifically told you're not to talk about the case to anybody, you're not to read the media, so clearly this juror has violated that. They violated the oath. And I think the judge has no, no other choice here but to uh, give a new trial. Okay, assume it's not a hoax. This is not an itty bitty problem, is it? No, this is, a, this is a huge problem because it violates the very oath that every juror has taken. You know, I've had a case as reversed for much less than this. Uh, I've had a case reversed where the juror said, uh, that it was not their verdict, at least on the transcript. But when we brought the juror in, the juror said, well, that's a mistake. I, I did say it was my verdict. But that was enough confusion to grant a new trial. Here you've got a juror that's clearly saying that they have decided the guilt or innocence of President Trump before the jury is deliberated. You know, if this case doesn't get overturned on that, if that's true, then this is just a manifest injustice. And I don't know what else to say about that. And, of course, this with this occurred uh, the day before the verdict, and they were day still before. reading, having readbacks of trial testimony. All right. Um, how, how does the court go about investigating to see if this is true or not? You call in the juror. So I think the judge should convene a hearing, bring in both sides. Clearly, we'll say to the lawyers, what is it you want to do? But I think the judge will say, regardless of what they say, I need to have this juror come in and answer some questions and see what it is that this juror wants to say. But... You know, unless the cousin is making this up uh, and, it, and none of this happened, if this is true and the juror admits it, it's a, it's a new trial. You, you can't base a verdict on a juror that's not following the law. And, and of course, I, I assume that one of the things they're doing, and I just learned this today after this broke, is that, is that you would get the IP address of the poster, and I at least that the person who posted the comment, and, and and that would be like a good place to start, so they can actually identify who it was that posted, probably. Yeah, assuming the juror doesn't admit it and say yes, I, I did say that. Assuming that the juror, uh, for instance, lies and says, well, I don't know anything about this, I didn't post that, I don't know anything about that. Then yeah, the IP address would be important, and I think you then call in the cousin if the cousin exists to say exactly what happened. Uh, but unless, again, unless this is all a hoax and none of this occurred, if this is factually true, this case is coming back. It has to. Otherwise, it's just manifest injustice. All right. If they can't identify the poster, who it is, I suppose it's someone is very clever technically and the IP address is, is a roaming one of some sort, um, aren't they going to have, isn't the judge going to bring in each juror? I, I think you start with the juror and clearly uh, you listen to what but this what juror, juror? Says. But what juror? You have to start with all of them. Well, yeah, if we can't identify who that juror is, then yeah, you're going to bring in every juror and you're going to bring them in individually and ask them questions. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, of course, will take forever. And it's, I mean, nonetheless, I mean, it, uh, then, you know, of course, there are all sorts of problems associated with that, trying to, you know, dragging in all these jurors and asking that question. 
They're all, well, they, I mean, they, I assume they they're all, they're all, they would all deny it. I mean, they may rightfully deny it, or they may, you know, some of them may, one of them may have falsely deny it. Well, it, you know, a lot of the times we don't have all the publicity, so a juror gets called in by the judge and they have no idea why they're being called in. Here, clearly, I think all these jurors are going to know what exactly happened, and, and unfortunately, they may be prepared to, to get false statements, which is why I think there's going to be even more of an investigation to try to verify what they say. I don't think you could just let them come in and deny that and say, okay, well, no harm, no foul, we don't know anything more. I think you do need to investigate this, and the Department of Justice should be investigating this, too. Jeff Brown, thank you. Thanks, Ben. Harvard Law School professor emeritus and author of the book Get Trump, Alan Dershowitz joins me. Um, Alan, if this is true, this uh, there was post a Facebook posting that says on the court system, my cousin is a juror. It says Trump is getting convicted. Thank you, folks, for all your hard work. The two emojis, the the celebra celebratory uh, horn, party horn, and a heart. What happens? Well, I've had a number of cases exactly like this, some of them in New York. New York has a great reluctance to open up jury deliberations uh, and ask jurors, you know, when did you vote? When did you have your deliberations, et cetera? The key to this is finding out if there is such a person, if she or he, and what the name is. Once you find out the name of the cousin, it won't be hard to find out the name of the juror. So the important thing is to authenticate the Facebook entry to see if it really came from somebody and to find out the name of that person. Without that, I don't think the court's going to go through the process of calling in every juror and asking every juror, did you have a cousin, right to a cousin? But they can't just, but they can't just let it sit. I mean, first, I mean, there's a possibility it's a hoax, but there's a possibility that it's real as well. I mean, if they, I mean, they've got to do, I mean, the judge can't just ignore it. If, if it's inconclusive as to who posted, I mean, the judge can't just sit on it and, and turn to Trump and say, tough luck, I can't find out, I don't know who did this or why. Look what the Justice Department is doing about the leak of the Supreme Court overruling of Roe versus Wade. They're purposely sitting on their hands. They're doing nothing. It would take no effort to really find out who that leaker was. And I think the Justice Department could. It has the resources. The FBI has the resources to find out if this person is real and who that person is and who the person's cousin is. So I think the investigation ought to go forward. All I'm saying is if it doesn't go forward, I don't think this court is going to go to the next step and call all the jurors in and ask them all, do you have a cousin? Are, are you saying that, though, that, I mean, is that your cell around the system and that's why they're not doing it, or that the judge should, should, you know, that this judge should not bother with it? He should bother with it. I'm not saying what he should do. We should call in all the juries. He should bother with it. You've asked me to basically assess what I think will happen. This judge is not going to go out of his way to undo this conviction. So I think if he has an excuse or a justification for not doing it, he will sit on that justification. And so the next step may be for the defense to try to get some investigators on this and try to figure out uh, who who that juror might be. Uh, and <clears throat> remember, too, the juries are anonymous. And so there'll be pressure on the court not to reveal the names of jurors, um, which could, if you reveal the name, one reason for not having anonymous jurors <clears throat> is if we knew the names of the jurors, there might be other people to whom the jurors spoke. It's very likely that uh, it was no secret that there was going to be a conviction and that jurors may very well have spoken to friends. But because we have anonymity, and the anonymity, as I understand it, prevails even after the verdict, um, it'll be difficult. Well, let me put it a little differently. It'll be easy for the judge to do nothing about this. And if you ask me my guess, my guess is going to be the judge will do everything in his power to do nothing about this unless it's forced on him. And the only way to force it on him is if we find that the uh, posting is uh, authentic, and that if we can find out the name of the person who did the posting. From there, everything else is easy. Once you know the person who did the posting, it's not hard to find out the name of the juror, if there is such a all juror. Right, if, all right, if, if, if nothing can be concluded, they can't figure out from the IP address, they can't figure out from the jurors, or whatever, as the judge turns to Trump and basically says, uh, tough luck, you know, I don't, I don't really care um, about whether or not the jury uh, did violate its oath and whatever risks there are to the integrity of the system. What's, what's the, are you a seller on the Court of Appeals in any higher court to sort of letting this one slide? I mean, you know, one of the questions I asked Jeff Brown just before you is, is this an itty-bitty problem or is this a serious violation to the fundamental fairness of a trial? It could be a very serious problem because it could reveal more than just that the juror violated our oath of office. It could mean that the jury didn't deliberate, that the jury came into the deliberations already knowing that they would convict 
maybe there was some indication that they were going to convict even before the close of the evidence. The real question is, does this disclosure open up the can of worms that the courts in New York try very hard to keep sealed? Does it allow the defense attorney to ask jurors some questions about the nature of the deliberations? When did you do your first vote? Did you have a vote or a preliminary discussion uh, tending toward a vote even before the evidence was concluded? What about before the closing argument? So this could reveal something more serious than merely a juror disclosing the status of deliberations before he or she should have done that. Uh, should the, uh, in hindsight, obviously it's a big, different question, in hindsight, um, the lawyers don't typically like for jurors to be sequestered. It can be sequestered through the whole trial or it can be sequestered, you know, at the time of deliberations. Is this the kind of case that should at least been, uh, the jurors should have been sequestered during deliberations? I think so. But I have to tell you, I don't think anything would have made a difference in this case. Uh, the conviction in this case was a foregone conclusion the day the decision was made to bring it in Manhattan. That was the end of the case. And I predicted this in my book, Get Trump. As soon as the case was brought in Manhattan, in front of a veneer, it, it's like D.C. You're going to get a conviction. You know, I, you know I, guess, I, I get that. And I, I mean, I, I detect, obviously, your sense of sourness on the system. I guess I'm a little old-fashioned. I actually believe in jurors in spite of the, you know, everyone walks into the courtroom with a sense of bias. But by the same token, I also expect that the judge should, should uh, run the courtroom in an orderly fashion. And if there's a defect or a constitutional defect that he acts, I saw a lot of them that I didn't like by the judge. But if the judge just sort of ignores this, I mean, I think I will find that pretty appalling. I agree with you. I think this whole thing has been appalling from beginning to end. And, you know, without making comparisons to the, to the Deep South, the likelihood of an acquittal in this case by this jury was about as great as the likelihood of an acquittal by an all-white jury against the black rape defendant in the South in the 1920s. Uh, sometimes there's nothing a lawyer can do. Uh, you know, Atticus Fitch is a fictional character. Uh, in the real life down South, Atticus Fitch did not win his cases. Alan Dershowitz, thank you. Thank you.